Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and this is what we're going to make today. I had been promising you one of those envelope folios that has the extra room in it so you can add lots of goodies in there. So this is it. Now I've used larger envelopes. I've used the, um, they're the A9 size craft envelopes. I got a big pack of them a while ago for a little bit of nothing. I'll link them below if I can still find them. But you can use any size envelopes you want. You do not have to use this size. You can use your uh, scrap envelopes, your, the ones you get in the junk mail, whatever you want to use. Now this has got, this is the flap for the front. It just opens up like this. It has a pocket here, pocket here, pocket here that we'll put journaling cards in. We'll probably put photos here. And then if you open it up this way, it has a pocket here and then it has a notebook in it. And then this is not a pocket, this is a faux pocket. But as you can see, it's got plenty of room in the notebook. And then on the back, it has a, another little pocket. And it closes up with magnets. This has a magnet that closes that, and then this has a magnet that closes that. So let's get into making this project, and I'll show you exactly how I do it. So you're going to start off with three envelopes. Now these are, let's see, these are eight and three quarter by five and three quarter. These are some that I had in my stash. So they're larger. They're for those big cards. Uh, you can use any kind of envelope to do this. You don't have to have these. You can use your scrap envelopes from the junk mail like we did before. I don't have any more of those. I actually used them all up in the projects that I made last week. So I'm going to be using these. Now these are the craft. So I like that because they go with just about anything. So I'm going to use these. And what we're going to do is on one of them, we're going to score from the factory score line out we're going to score one eighth inch so just go to your factory score line and then come out an eighth of an inch on your flap and you're going to score down through there and i'm going to try my best to keep that as straight as possible because these are not uh they're almost straight they're not perfect let's see what we got here It's, yeah, it's about an eighth. Uh, all of your envelopes are going to be a little bit different, so just score them the best that you can. On the second one, we're going to score at one quarter. So there's my factory score line. I'm going to come out to right there. And I'm going to score down through here at one quarter inch. So there's that one. You're going to score at 3 eighths, which is right here. So 3 eighths. So basically what we did on the three of them. So this very first one, we scored it at 1 eighth away from the factory score line. So there's my factory score line. I went out an eighth of an inch and scored. And then on your second one, you come out a quarter of an inch. So there's my factory score line. I came out a quarter. And then on this one, you're going to come out three eighths. So there's my factory score line. I came out three eighths. That's going to give you the bulk that you need to add your pockets, your pictures, all kinds of things in here. So we're going to go ahead and fold on those score lines. You're going to take the one that you scored at 1 8 and you're going to turn it with this full top up. This is the one that you scored at 1 quarter. You're going to leave it like this. There's your opening. There's your flap. And then what you're going to do is you're going to glue this one down right where you made that second score line there. Don't glue it to where the factory score line is, but glue it out here. Do it just like that. I think that's going to be pretty straight right there. Don't go over that score line. Just go right up to it. So that's the way we're going to glue that together. This one's up, and this is our 1 8 score line. This one's down. This is our 1 quarter score line. I'm going to use art glitter glue. It's going to give me just a little bit of wiggle room here. And 
and glue your flap all the way down because you're going to cover this with paper. Okay. All right, let's lay this one down and try to get it as even on the ends as we can. And just not going over that score line. My score line is hard to see today. It's very, very bright here. We had a little snow early this morning. And then the sun came out. And now it is super bright. Okay. So there's what you have right there. You can see that you've got that space in there. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish that down really well. Okay, here is the one that we scored at three eighths, and I just I just put number one on mine because I know this is the one that I'm going to use my flap on to close everything. Here's the two that we glued together, and you can see we have this flap back here. So what we're going to do is slide this one right in to that flap right there. So if you want to, you can open that up. Let me show you that again. These are the two that we just glued together. This is my one eighth, this is my one quarter. And as you can see, we got that flap back here. So what we want to do is we want to flip this over with that flap open back there. And then this one is the one that we scored at three eighths and we want to slide that in there and we want to put it right there on that flap. So we are joining the one that we scored at one eighth and the one that we scored at three eighths together. All right. That's how we want to put it together right there. But I'm going to put a little extra pocket in mine. This is just a little small craft envelope. And yeah, it's a little bit different color, but I don't care because we're going to ink this up and we're going to cover it with paper so it doesn't matter. So before I do anything else, I want to slide this one on here and glue it down. I want to kind of get it centered and then just glue that down. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down to this one first before I put those other two together. That way I will have a pocket, an extra pocket in there. So now we have a pocket here because we're going to cut this open and I'm going to go ahead while I have it like this before I attach it and just kind of slice that open. It'll be a lot easier to do it now than it will when I have all that other attached there. So there we go. We've got that. We've got a pocket here and then we'll have pockets up here and then we're going to glue this together right there. Remember, don't go over your score line. Just go right up to it. So I'm going to go ahead and add my art glitter glue on here. Now I marked mine as you can see. I just wrote one eighth, one quarter, three eighths on mine so I'll know about how they go together. All right. Again, we're going to come right up to that score line, not over. And we're just going to try to get our envelopes even on the ends. Let's see if I've got that pretty even. Looks like it needs to come this way just a tiny, tiny bit. I think that's right, right there. Okay. Press that down. Flip it over and press that down. And again, don't worry about your flaps and everything because all this is going to be covered with paper. So this is going to be the way they go together. This is your closure flap on that first one. Then you've got this one. And then if you open it up, you've got a pocket here and this is going to be covered and there'll be a pocket there. And then you can open it up this way and you've got a pocket here. And then we have this and we can put another pocket on there. 
So that's the way that you want to get these scored and get them laid together, just like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead on this little one and put some pull tabs on here. And thank you guys for telling me what those were called. Most of all of you said pull tabs, pull tabs, finger tabs, thumb tabs. So now maybe I won't forget. So we've gone ahead and done that. And then as we start adding our paper on, we will put the pull tabs on that. All right, we're going to go ahead and ink the edges of these. And I'm using Vintage Photo and just the oxide ink. All right, we have everything inked. Now it's time to start putting our mats on. And I'm using one of our new paper collections. Let me grab the cover and I'll show you what it's called. This is it from Cartabella and it's called Oh Happy Day. And this has some beautiful papers in it. Plus it has a whole sheet of alphabets let me find it. It has a whole sheet of alphabets in it too, along with the sticker sheet. So you have the sticker sheet and the alphabet sticker sheet in this pack. We have a few more of these available, I think, in the store. I'll link those below. So on this front right here, we're going to use this one. See if there's an up and a down. I don't think so. That looks pretty good right there. I'm going to put mine down with just dark glitter glue. You can use double-sided adhesive, whatever you have. This is a really thick paper, so it'll make this very, very strong. And I cut these to where I would have about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So there is the front. And then for this, what I did to make sure that I got my little flap here cut correctly, I just made me a template. So I just laid this out and cut a template. And then I cut my template down about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then that'll be my template that I can save and use when I make another one of these. Then I just laid it down on my paper and cut my paper out. So what we're going to do is lay this down on here and position it about where we want it. And then I'm just going to mark where that score line is. And that's where I'm going to cut that off at. About right there. Right past that score line. You see my template is the same size of this whole flap right here, but we put our score line in there, so our template's going to have to be cut down just a little bit. And I did that intentionally so that we could use it for every one of them and just trim a little bit off the bottom. So there we go. We've got that trimmed off. Then I'm just going to ink this end up again. And then let's see if that works. Works great. There we go. So it's better to make your template just one overall template and then all you have to do is just trim that end off to make it fit each one. Okay, so that is going to come over that to the front. I think that's going to be pretty. Look at that. That goes good together. I like that. Okay, then we can cover these other ones. I'm going to go ahead and cover the other inside piece right here. And I know I'm going to have to cut it off at the same place. So that was that whole little tab right there. So I'm just going to lay it in my trimmer. Trim that off. Then you open it up, you've got that. So then we're going to go ahead and cover this one. And I was thinking that this would look good there. I think that one will look good there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mark the center of this. I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful and put my pull tabs in the right places. This time. 
All right, looks like that is not my center. Let's see, four and a half, four and a quarter. Looks like that is my center right there. And we do want it that way up because when we open it, we'll have it like that. So that's the way we want it up. So I'm going to go ahead and put this, insert this on here and cut my pull tab. Then we can slide our journaling cards, extra photos, different things like that in that pocket. These are going to be large pockets, so we can put lots of things in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and take those little cut-off pieces. These are just scraps. And before I put my mats on here, I'm going to go ahead and slide these down in there and glue them right there, close to that score line. Like that. That way, when we put our mat on, you can see this behind it and not the brown envelope. So I'm just using the other side, the cutoff piece from that. That's all I'm using. And it doesn't have to be very wide. So just use your scraps on this part. And we'll just slide it down in there. Now, while I've got the tab cut on this one, I'm going to go ahead and cut my tabs on the other ones. I do believe all of them will go the same direction. So, so I'm just going to lay a couple of these together and then clip my tabs out. Then I'll have all of that done. All right, now we can go ahead and glue this mat on, now that we've got that back there covered. Just like that. Now, what I want to do is I want to avoid putting glue up here. I want to put glue just down through here so that my pocket will stay open. So I'm just going to use this to go by to put my glue on here. And then when it comes to the sides, I will go ahead and put the sides and the bottom on the glue on here. All right, now we have that pocket open. And I intentionally left this piece a little bit higher than this piece just so that it would give it a little bit of the offset. You can always bring this one down to where it's the same height as that one if you want to. It doesn't matter. It's just all up to you. Now, I went ahead and cut my mats for this little envelope here for the extra pocket. Depending on what size your envelope is, is the way you need to cut yours. Now, mine I cut at four and an eighth by five and a half. This is just one of those little small envelopes that you would put like a little greeting card or something in. So I'm going to put mine down right there, and I just marked the top there. I slid this paper all the way up, and then flipped it over and marked that, and then I cut it out, and then I just cut my other one out just like it. So if you slide it all the way up to the top, and then center it up from side to side, then you can mark your opening, and then when you slide it down to put your mat on, you're going to have that little bit of brown showing there. Now on this one, since we have the opening at the top, what we want to do is close this bottom up on this side. So we're going to put the glue all the way around. Just like that. So then that bottom is closed, but we have the pocket so things won't slide out of it like that. That's why you just put glue right on that bottom so that you'll have that full pocket there. So see, we, our pocket goes all the way down. On this side, we won't have to do that, but it's already closed up anyway, so we don't have to worry about it. So we've got that little pocket all ready to go, and all we've got to do is just put our tag or whatever we're going to use in there. Then we've got a pocket here. So now we can cover this one. And I was thinking about covering this one with 
this paper, I believe. Let's see. I've got that one there. That one there. So I think I'm going to use this paper right here to cover this one. So I need a scrap of this back of the yellow to put in there. Let me see if I've got one. Okay, I don't have a piece of the yellow that's long enough, so I'm just going to use this behind there. That will work great as well. So all I'm going to do is trim this little part right here off. Okay, there we go with that. And then we will put this mat on. I like that. I like that behind it. Okay. So again, all you need to do is put your glue down through here and up through here. And then I like to run it just right at the edge of this. That way I know my glue is going all the way up to the edge. Okay, then we can put this down. Okay. So our pocket there, that's a nice big pocket. So we've got that one covered, that one covered. All right, so let's flip it open now and we need to cover these. And you know, I was gonna close this with seam binding, but now I've changed my mind and I think I'm gonna close it up with magnets. And I know, yes, I've already got my paper there and I've already got my paper here. Somebody said the other day, <laughs> They said, why don't you put your magnets underneath your paper, and then it wouldn't show. Well, it's because of situations like this. A lot of the time when I'm creating, it's the first time that I've made that particular project, and I think I'm going to do my closure one way, and I end up doing it another way. So that is why. Just simple as that. But I will show you what I do if I definitely want that magnet closed. Well, I got out more magnets than I need. So these are self-adhesive magnets. They have the adhesive on the back of them. Now I'm just going to center that up pretty good and put it right there. Um, let me get a negative one to go on there. There we go. And then this side has got the adhesive on it as well. So all I need to do is make sure that my little folio is together like I need it to be. I'm going to hold it together as best I can and then press my little magnet down. And then this is going to serve two purposes. It'll help my folio stay together a little bit better than the seam binding and then it opens and closes a lot quicker too. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little piece of that yellow right there and then I need a little piece of that. So I'm taking my little tiny weenie hole punch. This is, I think, I want to say this is a 3 8 inch maybe. It's the same size as these magnets. And that needs a piece of that green right there. So let's get that right. There, looks good. And then we will put it, that green there. And nobody except you and I are going to be the wiser. And I use my glue dots to put these on seems to hold the paper really quick and a lot better than putting glue underneath. A lot of time when you put glue underneath you have to wait for it to dry and it slides around. These glue dots are pretty strong and they keep them in place. There we go. See, unless you just knew, you wouldn't know that I had magnets on there, would you? Now before we go ahead and cover this, I'm going to put magnets on here. This is going to close this portion of it up as well. And I just am going to try to get them pretty well centered. There we go. Got that nice and straight. Close that up. 
and there we are. Then when we put our paper on, those will be covered. So that's why, for all of you who wonder, that's why I don't put my magnets on ahead of time sometimes. It's because sometimes I don't know how I'm going to close it. And then we're going to put this down just like this because we want to have a pocket right here. Now, when we close this up, it looks like our pocket's going to be upside down. But this is going to be our top, so your pocket really will be at the top. It's just that when you open this, it looks like it may be upside down. But we're going to put a notebook right in here. So again, just make sure that you don't close your pocket up. So there is another pocket. Now, on this one right here, I did goof up. I cut this for a pocket, but this pocket would actually be upside down, and the things may fall out of it. So I'm not going to put a pocket on this one as usual. And I'm just going to turn this this way because our notepad is going to be in here like this. So this is actually not going to show, but if it bothers you, you can go ahead and put a strip on here if you want to, if you have cut yours like I did mine. I'll just go ahead and put a strip on there to make sure that that's closed up. But we're going to glue this one all the way down so it's not going to have a pocket in it like the other ones do. And then we're just going to glue this one all the way down. like that. So I'm going to put plenty of glue around my magnet so my paper seals down nice around it. So there, that looks like a pocket but it's actually not. But it closes up. Now all we need to do is put our back on. And I think I may just use this for the back. I think that would look good. And I'm going to cut this at the same size, five and a half by eight and a half. So there we go. We have the back covered. There's the front. Open it up with the magnet. Open it up. You've got pockets, pockets, a little pocket. Close that back over. Open this side up, and you've got a pocket here. We're going to have a notebook here, and I think we're going to put a little pocket maybe behind the notebook. Let's see. See how that would work. No, maybe not behind it, because that way if you're writing in the notebook, it might bother your writing if you had anything in there. Now, I'm going to put a pocket right here on the back, and I'm just going to use the opposite side of that paper. So what I've done, this is cut at five and a half, and I just added an inch onto here because I want to score at a half inch all the, on three sides. So we're going to score it one half inch on the bottom, and then one half there, and one half there. That should get us the size that we need. We'll fold it and make sure. Yes, exactly. Five and a half. Okay, so now we can fold and burnish and then put our tape on there and cut the corners. Okay, you pull the bottom one, pull the backing off the bottom, stick that one down to it, stick that one down to it. And then you can pull the sides off and you can put your pocket down and then your tag is just going to slide right down in there without sticking to anything. So we're going to put it, oh I do need to cut a little pull tab in the top of that. There we go. So now we have a pocket there that we can put some tags and things in. And you can go ahead and add more pockets to this if you want to. I think I'm going to leave mine as is and then just sew my notepad in here. The reason I'm putting a notepad in here is because I'm going to use this kind of as a journaling uh, notebook. 
So I'm going to actually sew my, uh, I'm going to sew my notebook in here just like that. So I'm going to reinforce this little center right here because when I put start putting holes in that, I don't want it to start coming apart. So I'm going to reinforce that. I'm going to go back to my Tyvek because I know it's going to hold it. So I just cut some little thin strips. This is not going to show, so you don't have to worry about it. As long as you keep them really, really thin. Okay, then I'm going to let that dry. And I did go ahead and mark my holes here so then I can punch my holes through that when that dries. Okay, I just am using a little piece of foam and I just used my little pokey tool and poked my holes in there. All right, I'm gonna mark my holes on here on my little notepad so I can get those punched. I'll bring my little piece of foam back in. I'm gonna make sure that this is all nice and straight. Make sure that you punch your holes right where it folds at. Now we're just going to take our needle and thread. And this is uh, just that white string. It's that real thick. It's almost like a crocheting string. So what we're going to do first is go down in this first one at the very top. Pull that through. And then we're going to come back up through this one right here. And I'm going to leave a tail on that. Then I'm going to go down to this one and poke that through. right there. Then we're going to come back through that one right beside it. Oh, we've come through the right hole. can't imagine. And then we're going to go down to this one. And I am going to look under there, see where my hole is. There we go. And then we're going to come back up through that one at the end. And then I'm just going to pull those kind of tight. And see, this way I only have a little bit of that thread showing on the outside, even though I am going to cover that. So we've got that. Pull it kind of tight. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie these in the center. You do not have to do this. You can tie them off down here. I, I just like to do that because to me it makes it a little bit stronger. But it's up to you how you want to tie them. I just like to pull them and make a tie in the center. It holds a little bit better to me. But just like that. And see, that doesn't bother me at all. Like I said, if it bothers you, then just tie them off at the end. And see, we do have a little bit of that Tyvek showing, but it's white or cream colored, so I'm not going to worry about that. That doesn't bother me at all. And then I want to cover this and this. Since this is going to be showing when we open that up, I want to cover that. And I'm trying to think. I want to reinforce it first because it is... It does have some tension on there with that thread. So I'm just going to cut some little thin strips of this Tyvek. And I will link this below if you're not familiar with it. It's just those envelopes that you get in the mail sometimes that you just can't tear. <laughs> and they aggravate you to death because you can't tear them open. 
that's exactly what this is. I buy mine in sheets off of Amazon because I don't get a lot of those envelopes. And I'm not going to go to the post office and get a, steal them from over there. So I just buy mine on Amazon. But I'll link it below just so you can see what it is if you're interested in getting any of it. I use it on all of my mini albums because once you reinforce your mini album spine with this, you're not going to have to worry about it anymore. Okay, now I'm going to come back with something on that. I'm thinking about some lace to put across there. Let's see what we've got. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with a piece of this seam binding and I'm going to put that right on top of that tie back. Just like that and I'm only going to glue down right in the center then I'm going to come back with this little piece of lace and put on top of that I think it'll work and when I put down lace I always use the Fabrifix or the Fabri-Tac it just holds it better and it grabs it pretty quick where you don't have to um, wrestle with it for a while then I'll come back with this and put right on top of that just like that I'm going to go ahead and trim this off okay and everything's still going to open right but we've got that extra reinforced plus a little decorative top on there I like that there we go kind of matches up with that and then we're just going to put a little strip on here and let's see if I cut that too wide I'm going to trim this down just a little bit and put that on there okay we have our strip to go right here now you could put lace on this part too if you wanted to that is up to you I'm just gonna put this piece of paper there I've already got it cut and it was almost the right size I just had to trim it down a little bit we're gonna put that there so there we go make sure we've got all of our little parts covered so there is that and then this one opens up that way there's our notebook nice I like that and I have some of this lace trim and it's just a floral trim I've had it in my stash forever it's time to drag it out and use it and I'm just cutting it apart and I'm gonna put one right there on that and then I may put some in the middle but I think that'll look good right there I'm just gonna use some art glitter glue to put that down with I think that'll be fine then I'm gonna use one of these beautiful pieces of red bling to put right in the center of that I'm gonna go ahead and put some art glitter glue under it just so that it will stick really well I don't want it to come off I'll put that right there ooh I like that pretty 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 all right I have a few more embellishments I want to put down I found this in my stash and it's one of those braided ribbons and I think I'm gonna put it across the top and one across the bottom now to keep your um, ribbon from fraying when you cut it I use a little bit of art glitter glue right on the end and I just pat it down let it dry and it works perfectly I'm not too fond on using a lighter on them so that's what I use now I've got some flowers that I'm gonna put down here I 
These are just out of my stash as well. Let's see. I think I want to put this up under there somewhere first. This is just something that I had cut for another project and I didn't use it. So we're going to use it on this one. All right, I think that is all we're going to do to this project. There's the front. You open it up. Got your pockets here, pockets here, here. And I will make some tags for my pockets. And then you have the lace there. Then if you open it up this way, then you have your pocket and your notebook and then a pocket on the back. I think that's cute. I think that's all I'm going to do to it right now. I may come back and put some tags in there. And if I do, I will definitely leave the photos for you to see. But if you try this project, please let us know in the comments below that you have tried it. And don't forget to go over and share on our Facebook group. And that is all for today, guys. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And we will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.